Hello. Hello. Morning po. <laughs> really, God is gracious, amen. Uh, every time somebody is standing here in front, I'm always taking down notes. And this morning, uh, I it was a great realization that message uh, was given to us by the Word of God uh, when Brother John shared to us about discouragement, amen. Everybody experiences discouragement in life, but I believe this are uh, this is only an abstract, and it can only become a reality once you will be under and captive of it. There's always hope in Christ, Amen. So praise the Lord for that, and let's proceed over uh, to our text here in the book of Joshua. So before we start, let us pray as we already read the text. Shall we all stand once again, Po? And let us pray. Our Father in heaven, once again, thank you, Lord, for those encouragement that you've given to us. We praise you, Lord, because you're always on our side, helping us, keeping us, Lord, and guiding us and directing our ways. I pray, Father, that this message, Lord, that we're going to study in the book of Joshua will become an encouragement to all of us this morning. Help us, Lord, and prepare our minds and hearts, and bless your preacher as well, Lord. Anoint my lips, and be the one to guide me. Just give me the wisdom and authority and power that comes from you. This is all us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be <coughs> seated. So let us uh, turn our Bibles first in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 1 before we go to our text here in chapter 2. The Bible tells us, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. Now we can see here that uh, Israel was delivered by the Lord God of heaven from Egypt's degrading bondage. We know that one, amen? If I'm not mistaken, the, uh, uh, the people of Israel were under bondage for about 450 years. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So these were the historical events that we can gather here, but they were not just only historical, but it also speaks through history. But also God speaks through history. Amen? Yeah. He speaks through history to give an example of our deliverance of the degrading bondage of sin. Now we can see that in First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. It says here, now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And also in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, now all these things happen unto them for an example. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Amen? Now we have to understand the central redemption in the New Testament, this is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. While in the New Testament, the central redemption here is uh, the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. Now during this time, as we've studied in the prior uh, chapters in the book, we can study here that Israel have experienced the supernatural power of the Lord God of heaven. Amen. Now, they were given the uh, food through the, the manna, and they also were... Uh, given uh, water from the rocks and that they were also uh, given by God the uh, pillar of cloud at day and the pillar of fire by night and so on and so forth that we can see here the ultimate power I mean the uh, supernatural uh, uh, the power of the Lord God that the Israelites were serving now it says here that uh, God wanted them to reach out Canaan no, Canaan here doesn't represent as heaven, but it represents on what they call the rest and also the victory and also the abundant blessings that the Israelites will be uh, enjoying later on. Now, God, that was, uh, God doesn't want us to just remain in the wilderness. Amen? Amen. Remember that the Israelites wandering, uh, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And now, God delivered them from the hands of Egypt. 
eh, because God was preparing them to what? For the enjoyment of Canaan. It is, it is also the same thing in our Christian life. We are brought out of sin so that we might brought into the what? Abundant life. As what I have said to you a while ago, wilderness is never God's permanent destination for all of us. Now, the Bible tells us, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, my Mo uh, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Now, the Lord spoke to Joshua. At this time, remember that he was the assistant of Moses. Now, it really takes time that God called him to be the new leader of Israel. We have to understand that God has a purpose of everything. And all we have to do is just to wait. Wait for the right time and wait for the right timing. Now, now this is his own time now to lead. But only after God prepared him. Preparation is very important. You cannot go into a real test. Thank you for preparing, Brother Deo. Amen. Amen. Parang wala. Amen. Thank you. Sorry. Now, in verse 2, God says, Unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Now, this is not the entrance into the, uh, the land of Canaan. And God entrusted Joshua to lead the people. So the same thing Jesus goes before us, that, that we have in God to possess. Now, the whole land was given, but they could only possess that which they what? Claim. Remember that. If you will not claim it, if you will not do something, nothing will happen. What they took must be fought for against, and a, what they call, it is always the work of God. Now remember, it is not because Joshua was a great leader. It is not because uh, Israel was a great nation. The reason why they were able to possess all of those land, it is because God is great. And the presence of God was with them. Now, in verses 4 to 5, we can see here, from the wilderness as far as the great river, now God gave here the precise territory of the land here. He described it. And it is a real blessing for them. Those boundaries. Now, the good thing here, that really encouraged them when God said, So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor for what? Forsake thee. Amen. That's a great encouragement from the Lord. Now we can see also here in verse number 6 to 7 to 9, Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. But instruction, only be thou strong and what? Very courageous. Joshua is called to what? To have that courage, to have that boldness. Because this exposes what he called Joshua's weaknesses. And everybody has weaknesses, amen? You can have your own weaknesses that will really uh, uh, drag you out from the presence of God. But hey, God told us to what? Be strong and very courageous. Now, discouragement may come in. But again, be strong in the Lord. Amen. Now, let's proceed as we continue. Verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Joshua did not only need to read the word of God, but again, God's word, but it had to be on his what? Lips. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. And as we continue here, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Not only in his lips, but also the word of God must be in his mind. Amen. 
on his mind and that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein he had to what do it and the bible tells us for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success amen Remember that Christian success is not measured by the same standards as of the world. Amen? World success. Even if the world accounts us in Romans chapter 8 verse number 36 to 38, it says, As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that what love but us praise the lord so as we continue here god joshua assumes the leadership and as the people to prepare as we go on here in verse 16 okay so on verse 17 according as we hearken unto moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Here we see Israel in the kind of unity as a nation. Amen? Because without the unity, they will not win the battle. They will not conquer those lands that were prepared to them by God. They overcame the temptation to see the eastern tribes. As to separate from the rest of Israel. Take note of this. Verse 18. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against my, thy commandment. And will not hearken unto thy words. In all that thou commandest him. He shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage again. It was repeated again. It is repeated again once again. Amen. This must have been the confirmation of God's word to Joshua when they said, God loves to confirm his word to us. That was Joshua. Now, if you're going to read the whole uh, book of Joshua, it is really a great encouragement to all of us. Now, let's proceed now to our text in Joshua chapter 2. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out to shoot him. Two men to spy secretly saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and what? Lodge there. Now, we have to take note on this. Now remember that all this takes place during the three days Joshua has commanded the nation to wait on the banks of Jordan. You can see that in Joshua chapter 1 verse 11. God has a special purpose for these three days. Special purpose. Amen? Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from what? What's that? Shoot him, two men to spy secretly. Why is it that Joshua made this secretly? Remember that in the previous event that happened in the, numbers, uh, in the book of Numbers, when Moses sent out 12 spies to the land of Canaan, it was public. Amen? And then after that the survey of the land, Ten of those spies gave a what? Negative report. And only Joshua and Caleb gave a positive report. Now, this kind of careful preparation shows what they call faithfulness. And it is not what they call lack of faith. God's promises of success to us should never yeah, lull or cause us to relax in our faith in God. Remember that God's promises of success to us should never do that way. But it should what? Encourage us on to step out in what you call godly activity. Now, 
to spy out secretly, secret. But it doesn't mean that if you have plans, you have to just do it secretly. No. I am uh, talking about a different scenario here, an event here. The last spies that were went out publicly turned out badly for Israel. And it caused division to the people of Israel. Some of them wanted to return back to Egypt in order to serve and to become slaves. And only few wanted to remain. Actually, only two. Joshua and Caleb. Now, the Bible tells us here. And came into an harlot's house named Rahab and what? Lodge there. Rahab. Through the history of Christianity, okay, it has always embarrassed those interpreters that these two spies went to the house of a prostitute. But again, some have tried to say that Rahab was simply an innkeeper, but here the Bible clearly teaches that what? She was a what? Harlot. Now, we have to understand that it is great when sinners receive Jesus, not those who deny their sinfulness or don't know what they are capable of apart from Jesus. Remember that the gospel is for those who know they are sinners. For those who admit that they are sinners. Now the question, why did they go to the harlot's house. This is the question. Though it was an awkward place. Now, some of the scholars uh, told us that it is a safe place. Amen? It is a safe place as well in order for them to hide. They lodged there a perfect place to hide and remain what? Anonymous. And this was necessary because the city was on what? A strict guard during the time. Now, let's continue. Nantok na po ba kayo? Amen? Let's continue. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said, Thus, there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. Now, in that culture during the time, hospitality. Okay, a, a strong tradition of hospitality is always being done by these people. Now, if someone was a guest in your house, you had a strong duty to protect them and care for them. Now, remember what happened in the book of uh, Genesis when uh, Lot was visited by the two angels? Amen? When the wicked people of that uh, place wanted to uh, act... Uh, a uh, thing that is not good for, for them, but what Lot defended them. Now, we can see here his fearless faith. His fearless faith. Even considering this, Rahab went much farther than the respect of what? Cultural tradition regarding hospitality. She put her own life on the line for these men. It was not easy. It will cause her own life. She said, The men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. But again, the Bible report, uh, simply tells us that lie does not what? Praise or excuse it. Lie is a lie. But perhaps it has beforehand determined in the heart to not to lie in the obedience of God. He would have made a way for her to preserve the life of the spies without lying but again lie is a lie and it is not being justified but it shows what they call courage in the life of Rahab consider she was a pagan sinner living in idolatrous nation doesn't have any idea when it comes to the word of God but again he took those men and saved them fearless faith Remember, with no previous contact with the Word of God? Now, how about you? What is your excuse? I 
I believe the example of the life of Rahab is very important to us. And this, this must be an encouragement as well. Second thing here that we can see. In verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. See? For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly what destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Amen? It was very surprising. Outbursts of a woman living in a what they call pagan city. Idolatrous nation. But again, this faith here shows how God had a plan of bringing Rahab and the spies together. And it is also the same thing or kind that we can see when God supernaturally brings us to people who are believers or who are open to the gospel. Now, see how he recognized the power of God. Rahab's declaration, He is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. It is also what the proof of her faith. Second point, she has confident, uh, I mean confident faith. It is not strong faith and it is not perfect faith, but her faith is what? Commendable. Amen? In Hebrews 11.31, please. Hebrews 11.31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not. When she had received the spies with what? Peace. And in James 2.25 Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. See? It was, a com it was commendable. That was her faith. Now, we might be greatly dismayed at the fact that Rahab was a prostitute or that she was a liar, but the fact that she was not saved by her work, but by her what? Faith. That is very important. She knew who was God, and she knew who she was, and she trusted God for her very life. What a confession, amen. Confident. From the lips of a woman whose life had been imprisoned in pagan idolatry. She believed in one God, not in the multitudes of God that populated in the hidden temples during those days. And she believed He was the God of Israel who would give the land to His people. Now, it was not easy for them. It, those Israelites were just in the wilderness, but they were able to hear how the mighty God of Israel delivered them from the bondage of Egypt, and how God delivered them against the Amorites, and how they destroyed and annihilated the two kings of the Amorites. They were so powerful. So when they heard, uh, when they heard that one, they were scared. They were afraid. And the Bible tells us that their hearts melt, melted because of that. And the same thing, God can also do that to those people who rejected God later on. Now, let's continue. 
Rahab believed in a great and awesome God. Amen. Our confidence that we are God's children comes from the witness of the word of God before us and the witness of the spirit of God within us. 1 John chapter 5, please. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 to 13. Okay. The Bible tells us, if we receive the witness of men, the witness, uh, uh, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his what? Son. Amen? There's a great one that we can see here from this uh, text here. Now, verse 10 he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Now everybody, every day receives what we call the witness of men regarding various things. Therefore, we should have much more confidence in the witness of God rather than what? The witness of men. Witness of God when He tells us who Jesus is. That's what we need. Now let's continue here in verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in His what? Son. Verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. And verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of, Jesus, of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, Jesus. Now, we receive the, uh, what they call, Holy Spirit, as in what they call, inner confirmation of our standing before God. We can see that in Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's why when we refuse to believe on Jesus, we reject the testimony God has given on His Son. Amen? Therefore, we call God a liar with, uh, with our unbelief. Now, let's continue here. The assurance of salvation isn't based only on what we know from the Bible. Or how we feel in our hearts. But it is also based on how we live. For if there hasn't been a change in our life, then there's a doubt that we are truly saved. We have to understand that. That's why Rahab's obedience gave evidence of a changed life. Rahab's conversion was truly a knock of what he called God's grace. She didn't receive, uh, deserve to be saved, but because of the mercy of God on her. Amen? The third point here, 12 to 14. The Bible tells us here, And the man answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly what? with thee. Now, verse 15, Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt, dwelt upon the wall. Now, another thing here that uh, we can see here is what they call the concerned faith. The concerned faith. Look at that. Once again, verse 14. And the man answered her, Our life for yours. I'm sorry. Number 12, verse 12. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you what? Kindness. That you also will show kindness to my what? Father's house. Rahab's desire is to what? To see her family saved as well. That her family will be rescued from that great destruction 
that may happen later on. And the lamb she goes to in order to save their lives shows that her love should be noticed as well as her faith. Now we can see here, concerned faith. Now, we can uh, see that one in also in the uh, book of New Testament when Andrew met the Lord Jesus Christ. What happened is that he shared the good news with his brother Simon and brought him to Jesus as well. Amen? Amen. And also the cleansed leper when went home and told everybody he met what Jesus had done for him in Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 45. Now, Rahab, however, wasn't concerned only about her own welfare. For once she had personally experienced the grace and mercy of God, she was burdened also, as what I've said to you a while ago, to rescue her family as well. She said, swear to me by the Lord. Now, this shows that she longed for the assurance and asked for an oath, a promise. She wanted to live her sinful life and culture and come to God and to the nation of Israel. Now, let's continue here. The men gave the guarantee in two ways. First, they pledged the word, okay? We will save you together with your family. But second, they said also that they pledged your lives that they wouldn't break their word. In other words, they became a surety for Rahab's family. Now, in the book of Proverbs, it warns us against of the what you call surety in the business world because it involves a risk that could lead to your loss of everything. You can see that in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1. Can you please turn it there, Mr. Milka? My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger. Let's proceed to verse 11, chapter 11, verse 15. He that is surety of for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth surety ship is what they call sure. In the realm of spiritual, we are saved because of Jesus. Amen? We are saved because of Jesus, who owed no debts in us, and also was willing to become surety for us in Hebrews 7.22. Hebrews 7.22 By so much was Jesus made a surety of a what they call better testament. Remember that he died for us. As long as he lives, our salvation is what they call secure because of the promise of his word and the guarantee of his what they call eternal surety ship. We through him because he, is al he always lives to in Intercede, uh, intercedes in our lives. We have confidence that He is able to save completely. Amen? Amen. He can save us. So despise one Rahab. Okay. We can, guide, we can uh, make you a what they call guarantee. But be sure not to tell this to other people. Don't tell this. Don't divulge this information to anybody in the city. Other than the members of your family. That's her concern. The concern faith. Now. Let's proceed to the last point here. In verses 15 to 24. Then she let them down by a cord through the window. For her house was upon the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall. Remember here that the scarlet thread that was used by the spies in order for them to escape and, and going down to the wall, that is the typology of the Lord Jesus Christ. The scarlet thread there. Bind the scarlet cord in the window. So this was the signal of the army of Israel that once they will see that uh, what they call sign, they are not going to attack that house or to kill those people inside that house. That was the covenant. And I believe when they made that covenant, they are sure of it. Now God gave us the covenant as well that we can, I mean, 
that we can uh, guarantee from our Lord Jesus Christ. That when he saves us, if you are truly saved, then you will be with him forever. If you truly repented of your sins, then you can enjoy that surety. You can have that guarantee from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it says here that as early as the first century, according to the commentators, such as what they call Clement of Rome, Justin Marty, Irenaeus, Origen, and more so, that they this scarlet cord as a symbol of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Remember that the blood was the one who washed away our sins. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Again, as what, I've served, uh, as what I've said to you a while ago, we don't deserve this. But because of His mercy, we're saved. We've given this opportunity. And this is the covenant that God gave to us. The scarlet robe would identify the house of safety for the family of Abraham. Now, do we have safety here in our lives right now? Do we have that assurance? Of course we have that assurance. We have that surety because we have a great God. Now, again, the color of the rope is significant for it reminds us of the blood. Now remember what happened in Israel, uh, in uh, Egypt during that time? During that, what they call uh, Passover. When they were instructed to put the uh, blood of the lamb on the post. So once the, at night, once the uh, angel of the Lord see that the uh, blood that was the place on the post of the house, the angel will, of that will not what, attack or kill the firstborn of the house. Amen? Amen. It was a sacrifice, doorpost. So often in biblical covenants, God appointed some what he called physical and material things. Or a token to remind his covenant and a promise to us. First, his covenant with Abraham that was sealed. What was that covenant? The right of circumcision. A token in Genesis chapter 17, 9 to 14. We're not going to read that one. And when also God established a covenant with Israel at Mount Sinai. Both the covenant book and the people were what? Sprinkled with blood. That was a token as a reminder of his covenant with Israel. In Exodus chapter 24 verse number 3 to 8. And also during the time of Noah, God gave a token or a promise or a covenant that God will not destroy the earth anymore with a flood. By showing that what they call token of covenant, the rainbow. Sabi nila, pag tuturo mo, maputol mo daw ang kamay yun. Di ba? O di totoo po yun. So Joshua would be a survive, uh, savior for Rahab. And he is also what he called, Joshua will also give judgment to the people of Jericho during the time. So in the same way, Jesus is a savior for those who trust in him. And he will be a judge to those people who will reject him as well. So what happened here? As we're about to finish here. Behold verse. Twenty one. And she said according unto the word. To your word so be it. And she sent them away. And they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. I don't know what will be the reaction for those people. Who will visit the house of Rahab. They said, what this scarlet represents? What does it represent? Tama ba English ko? Mahirap pala sa grammar, ano? So, I don't know what would be their reaction. But again, as we people of God, we should be a witness to the lost people. You know that we have that salvation. We should not keep it by our own. We know the word of God. 
We know that these people will uh, go to hell. What we're going to do? We have to warn them. We have to proclaim and preach the word of God to these people. But again, take note. The spies told Rahab not to give any information about the coming uh, judgment that the people of Israel will do to the people of Jericho. But again here, so the spies were able to escape. And they went into the, what they call, uh, mountain to hide there for three days. So after three days, they, already sh they were already sure that no more pursuers So they went back to the camp. Now, what happened here? And told him, what's that? In verse uh, 24, uh, verse uh, 22, and they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. In verse 23, so the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all the things that befell on them. Now remember the covenant faith. They said, Oh, Joshua, we have surveyed and searched the land, and by the grace of God, Joshua, listen very carefully. The hearts of the people melted because of us. It is not because of us. It is not because of you. But it is because of God. They were afraid. They don't know what to do. Joshua, it is a great confirmation that God will give us Jericho. Amen. Amen. The same thing as we ourselves. Those things that we are going to uh, ask for God, be sure that it is according to His will. It is, not by, uh, it is not only according to our own might or our own will. Now remember that everything that we have here comes from the Lord. Amen. Hey, considering how God will have them conquer the city of Jericho, it is not because of their strategy. Amen. It is not because Joshua was a uh, great soldier, but it is because of what? The presence of God was with them. You know, if God is always with you, there's nothing for you to worry of. Said, he said here, they said, Truly the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands, for indeed all the inhabitants of the country, oh, what? they faint. Hearted because of us. But again, remember this. The survey didn't help the military strategy here. But you know what helped them? You know what encouraged them? Is what? The words from those spies. You know, sometimes we need an encouragement from other people. You know, our pastor is also discouraged. Some of the preachers here were also discouraged. You might be discouraged as well. And you need somebody to exhort you. You need somebody to encourage you. Aside from reading the word of God. Amen? Amen. After hearing that, yeah, we can conquer the land. Wow, what a promise, Amen. This was more important than a good battle plan. The encouragement from the Lord. That's why ang salita ng Diyos hindi nagkulang sa atin. Kahit kailan. Discourage and discourage ka. Why? Have you read the Word of God? In chapter 1, be strong in a what? We have good courage. Now, there was another purpose at work in sending the spies. First is to save Rahab. 
in this we see the extent God goes to in bringing one woman and her father's house to salvation. Remember that someone seemingly impossible to save, but God's hand isn't short to save people like Rahab. He can work in amazing ways to bring salvation. Amen. And that's the faith of Rahab. And I hope this will encourage us to continue our faith with the Lord. Now, Buddy John and I didn't uh, talk about this message, but the message is connected. Why? God wants us okay, to keep on our stand for Him. Amen? Amen? To keep our stand for Him. You know, we're so glad that this church is teaching sound doctrine. We have to appreciate that. And we have to really focus on the Word of God. And we have to really focus and wait for the right time that God will do something better for us. Later on. But the reason are you discouraged? Oh, naman. Tao din naman po ako. Bukang hindi lang discouraged, pero talagang discouraged yan. But by the grace of God, He's always there encouraging me through reading of His Word. And through those reminders. And I hope as we go on in our journeys of life, don't forget. The Bible tells us, be strong and have good courage. Be not dismayed. Amen. God is good all the time. And you have to be strong that faith that you have right now. We're serving the real, the true, and the powerful God. God bless us all. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord God, for...